The majority of Democratic 2020 candidates descended on Iowa, some of them taking aim at the frontrunner, Joe Biden, who was not there. Our new poll numbers show a very tight race for second place in that state. So back with us to help break it down is CNN political director David Chalian. Also joining us, MJ Lee, CNN political correspondent, and Alex Burns, CNN political analyst and national political correspondent for The New York Times. Great to have you all here. So, uh, David, Chalian, let's just put up wh what poll do you think is most attention grabbing? What do you think our viewers need to see this morning? Well, I mean, certainly that overall sort of baseline of where the race is at this stage, eight months out, as Democrats are starting to get a little more engaged here in Iowa before the debate season. I just look at that horse race number. It shows Joe Biden that. with that lead, Allison. But what I think is interesting is that that lead is more narrow than it has been in these national polls. And as you indicated, I think one of the key things in this poll is that Bernie Sanders does not live in the second place slot all by himself, as we've seen in a lot of these other uh, national polls. There is, they, they are all bunched up right there. Um, and I think that, you know, Warren and Sanders and Buttigieg clearly are, are splitting some of this non-Biden vote. Uh, and I think the test is now, can one of these sort of consolidate mm -hmm. that support to really give Biden a run for his money? If we can put that poll back up again, too, because there's something else which hasn't received a lot of attention. And Alex, I know you've looked at this. There are 18 candidates at 2 percent or lower. That's staggering. And it does have an impact on the rest of the race as well. It really does. When you look at the three candidates who David was pointing out are essentially splitting the second place uh, slot right now, uh, Sanders, uh, Warren, Buttigieg, they're each separated from each other by about a point. About a quarter of the total vote is either undecided or going to candidates who are absolutely nowhere in this race. We have 2% of of support or less. So that means that as we get closer and closer to voters actually having to go out and caucus or cast their, uh, their virtual caucus uh, ballots online, uh, we're going to see whether, you know, does that 1% that's currently parked with Andrew Yang or Michael Bennett or Jay Inslee stay sort of committed to the very end? Or do you start to see people saying, no, it's important to me that I actually have a role in deciding who our nominee is going to be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sort out among these second place candidates. If I'm Joe Biden and I am eight points ahead of just eight points now, uh, ahead of the nominal second place mm -hmm. candidate, and there's 24% of the vote that's currently essentially wasted, that makes me very nervous. Let's just um, play for people how the front runners in Iowa were framing whether this is a moment for moderation. And lots of people heard them referring, not in name, to Joe Biden here. Listen to this. We're not going to win by playing it safe or promising a return to normal. We are where we are because normal broke. There are people who are ready for big structural change in this country. I understand that there are some well-intentioned Democrats and candidates who believe that the best way forward is a middle ground strategy that antagonizes no one, that stands up to nobody, and that changes nothing. In my view, that approach is not just bad public policy, but it is a failed political strategy. Is that how they see Joe Biden? Challenging no one, standing for nothing? Well, look, uh, each of these candidates over the weekend had literally five minutes to make their case to Iowa voters. And in, the, in those five minutes, you can't really get into a lot. And I think for some of these candidates, a calculation uh, was clearly to go after, even if it was not by name, uh, Joe Biden, because he has been the clear front runner for so long. Uh, I think what we're seeing happen right now is the, is the field uh, shake out in the way that uh, we had expected it to, because Biden's name recognition uh, has been so high. We always expected that he would probably have less room to grow uh, than anybody else. And at this point in the race, uh, we are seeing people in Iowa and elsewhere uh, learn a little bit more about these other candidates and the other options uh, that they have that is not Joe Biden and deciding uh, whether to get behind them instead. I think if there's one other warning sign to point to from the new CNN poll uh, for Joe Biden, it is the enthusiasm mm -hmm. number. And I, I think we have that. Uh, and that is uh, backed up by not just polling, but 
also the many voters that myself and my colleagues have been speaking to in Iowa and elsewhere, that uh, when you talk to voters and you try to get a sense of whether uh, people who are currently supporting Joe Biden are doing so with enthusiasm or uh, sort of because of inertia, because they feel like uh, he is someone they know and they feel like they can, uh, he can uh, defeat Donald Trump, a lot of people still fall in that category. They haven't really seen him yet. They haven't seen a lot of him yet in Iowa. They will this week. He'll be out there Tuesday, the same day as President Trump, which is framing that you know that Joe Biden likes there. Uh, David Chalian, there is something interesting about what we heard from those three other candidates, though. They're talking about Joe Biden's um, politics and his moderation, and I think they're making an electability argument with that, which seems slightly different than we've heard before, because that goes to what Joe Biden thinks his strength is. Exactly. That is what Joe Biden is selling, uh, you know, trying to keep his eyes on Donald Trump, trying to show that he is the one most equipped to defeat Donald Trump. And we know, uh, you know, I was talking to a ton of Iowa Democrats uh, this weekend, and that that notion of really just wanting someone to defeat the president is very much top of mind for voters. And Joe Biden is trying to tap into that. But Bernie Sanders was making no bones about it. He doesn't think uh, that trying to, you know, be in the middle or try and be a, a centrist in some way, appeal to both sides, is the way uh, to win enough support to defeat Donald Trump. Now, th that is something that will get tested throughout this primary, John. But I will just note also, I was at Cedar Rapids at that event yesterday, it's not just Joe Biden that didn't appear because he had a family obligation. There was no campaign presence whatsoever, not a single Biden sign, not a Biden mm -hmm. table. They, they just opted out. So, so nobody from Biden world uh, was even sort of out there talking to this gathering of Iowa Democrats this weekend. Hmm. He's just got to get out there. That, the, that when you talk to Democrats, you know, uh, folks were out in Iowa this weekend, but when you to, talk to Democrats sort of around the country, state leaders, leaders in Washington, the big concern with Biden right now, it's almost less about ideological moderation and more just does he want the ball, right? Does, is he going to get out there and really fight for this? Because voters may not parse you really carefully, you know, is he a click or two to the center of, you know, Pete Buttigieg on this issue or that. But if you are running as the electable, the electable candidate, if you're running as the guy who can beat Donald Trump, you got to look like you want to take on Donald Trump. You got to look like you want it every day. 